Britain is brimming with hoarders. Piles and piles and piles of clothes. There's the body in here somewhere. Oh, yeah. Their collecting is catastrophic. This has never been worn. This is brand new. And they're drowning under clutter. But help is at hand. It's awful. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Collectibles expert Curtis Dowling will work out what's worth cashing in. Already, just in that box, you've got about £70, £80. Pounds. Yes. Blunt question, is it something you'd buy off me? While Queens of Clean Joanna Riley and Marion Kamak will sort out what to keep and what to chuck. How can you have a life in this clutter? Unwrapped Christmas present. Clearing rooms for the first time in years. Amazing! It's fantastic, aren't you pleased? Yeah, I am pleased, actually. No one said it would be easy. I think I've got my work cut out here. So can our hoarders part with their possessions? I don't want to keep that. It's priceless. And reclaim their homes for good. Why isn't he on your mantelpiece? This is the thing. Today, our experts tackle a bargain hunter with an enormous stash of electricals. Did you realise you had this many? Oh, I'll be honest, yes. Can they sort it? I'm losing the battle, so I desperately need to, to get rid. And they're with a big kid who once parted from his massive toy collection. I'm utterly frustrated. I could never find anything. Hello! Our experts have a mammoth task ahead. How do you know where anything is? I don't know where anything is. That's the problem. Our experts have two cluttered houses to sort out today. Later, they're tackling Martin's mounds of mess in Middlesex. You're not getting anywhere far, no, are you? No, it's a bit of a nightmare. But first, they're starting in Lincolnshire with retired club DJ and bookshop owner Graham. <laughs> whose passion for the cut price... I love bargains. ..has got out of control. This is going to sound really bad, but I can't walk past a skip without going through it. He's so tempted by a boot fair or jumble sale. This is actually the attic space. Heaven knows what we'll find in there. That his home is filled to the rafters. Books, hundreds of paintings, video recorders, record decks, scale electrics, even a blow-up dinghy. And the garage is bulging at the seams. Ta-da! I don't even know what's in here myself. Now enough is enough. I feel like I'm a bit like a hamster and I've been sort of filling my pouches up. The garage is full, my shed's full. Oh, dear. <laughs> Oops. I'm losing the battle, so I desperately need to, to get rid. Fear not, Graham. Our experts have heard your SOS. Declutter Dynamo Joanna runs a cleaning business, whilst Curtis has 25 years antiques experience and can spot potential treasures to sell. Hello! <laughs> first stop, the lounge, and some deceptive first impressions. A tidy lounge. A lovely well, lounge. Well, it's about the tidiest you're going to see in the whole place. Oh, OK, this is your little bit of peace and quiet, <laughs> is it? Yes, it is. You wait till you see the garage. I mean, that's, that's going to be fun. It doesn't take them long to find the collectibles cluttering up the attic. That's a lot of stuff. Well, I was looking for gold, but I didn't mean the single by Spandau Ballet. And the gadgets stuffed into the study. One, two, three, four, five of exactly the same game consoles. I am petrified. I've got my work cut out today. Paintings are just one of the things Graham collects, and among them is a botanical print he thinks could have value. I was told that the original was in the British Museum Library. Look at the quality of it. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's fabulous quality, isn't it? It really is very detailed. The limited edition print of exotic flowers is by Australian artist Celia Rosser. Is there a signature on it or is there yes, anything else? Yes, down here it's got one of one and then a signature. If that one yeah. of one is right, yeah. then all of a sudden this becomes relatively desirable. Excellent. Wow. Yeah. Curtis thinks an auction house might be the best place to start selling the print. 
Next stop, the garage. Graham. <laughs> I can't even get in there. It's utter mayhem. Chock a block with everything from air conditioning units to disco speakers. What do you want to do with the majority of this stuff? Um, I would say a good two thirds can go. If somebody's here or a group of people are here, I can say yes, no, yes, no, quick. That's what works best. Definitely. Split decision, yeah. have a look. Yeah. Couple Think of seconds. about it, I'll drag it back in. There's far too much stuff for me to actually get in there and get started with you. Yes. I'm going to call in some muscle. Yes, please. And some manpower. Yes, please. With so much in here, Joanna needs to call in professional house clearers to help sort out and take away things to sell and recycle. I really think this is the best shot for Graham to finally get rid of his clutter. Back now to that other mission, making money. In the living room, Curtis thinks Graham's first ever collection could bring in some funds. So this got you into all your collecting? Yes. A lot of these stamps are early editions. They may not be as bright as the modern yeah. stamps, but they really do it for me. I remember when I bought some of them yeah. and what I was doing, and so it's like uh, reliving my life in a way. Do you know, when you talk about stamps, your eyes light up like a ten-year-old. I f feel like a ten-year-old. It's really strange, because you can uh, see it. But the reality of it is they're only worth really a fifth of the face value. The bottom dropped out of the stamp market about 30 years mm. ago. In so this case, is going? I probably keep about four or five of these albums, mainly because there's a little bit of sentimental mm. value to yeah, those. you've got to keep them. Curtis reckons selling as a job lot to specialist collectors is the way to go. And in the front room, Curtis spots something smoking hot that cost Graham just £14. I used to be a smoker and I was looking for a, a sort of 1920s, 30s style cigarette case and I saw this and it was presented to a member of the Masonics. I think something like this would do pretty well at auction. Really? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly going to do better than £14, <laughs> that's for sure. Normally at auction, all the silver goes. So if I took this away yes. and I could get between £60 and £100 for I'm you... Very happy. You'd be happy with that? Very happy. Graham's a lovely collector to work with because he's a collector with purpose, which makes me think, is he going to struggle to get rid of all this stuff? Because he loves it all. So far, Curtis is taking away the print, cigarette case and potentially thousands of stamps. He reckons it could all net Graham hundreds of pounds. While he sells, Joanna is staying put to declutter and might spot more things of value for Curtis. So tell me how this decluttering is going before I shoot off. I am very nervous because he tells me there's more for me to see. You've got a tough job on this. I know, Curtis, that parting with things can be really painful, but that's my job and I'm here to do a job. Yeah, absolutely. I've got to get on and help him. Thank you. First stop on Curtis's selling tour is a large antique centre. He found out an auction house didn't sell the last Celia Rossa print they'd had. Curtis doesn't want to risk that, so it's time for plan B. So I'm taking Graham's print into this retail location. And someone like this is probably going to want to offer me trade money. So all I can do is give it a go. Graham wants around £200 for it from antiques trader Tara. Tara, now I probably don't need to tell you what this is, because you probably know. Yes, yeah, Celia Rossa. Yes. Yeah. Had any before? Uh, no, I haven't. No, that's quite a nice one, isn't it? In this corner, and it's been covered up by this, it's one of one. So he does want top dollar for it. What's top dollar? He wants £200 for it. OK. I'd rather be paying 150 Time to see if Graham will budge on the price. Ah, uh, how are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm all right. Now, Graham, what's the lowest you're going to go, Graham, that I can do this deal? Thanks, Graham. Speak to you soon, sir. Bye. Well, Graham wants 150. Let's see if we can keep him happy and get 160, 170. So Graham said 160. Oh, excellent. Happy with that? Yes, definitely. Result. And Curtis still has the cigarette case and the stamps to sell. Mm -hmm. 
but Graham's not the only one who needs our expert's help. Meet big kid Martin in Middlesex. We've got lots of Muppets everywhere, but I love the Muppets. He's got masses upon masses of old toys. My parents have spoiled me. You know, they've, they've given me everything that I ever wanted, and I've still got it. Oops. Scooby-Doo. I think I am a bit of a hoarder, yes. But toys are just part of his clutter collection. Martin's a complete retro-maniac. I don't make them like that anymore. Nice 1950s cupboard. Oops. The 38-year-old former puppeteer still lives with Mom and Pop, who've had enough of the clutter. My mum doesn't like a mess. She's very, very tidy. I think I'm ready to get rid of some of the stuff because I'm utterly frustrated. I could never find anything. Drives me mad. Hello! Trouble is, attempts to tidy up haven't gone well. I've tried it before. I've got all my friends up in the loft to help me. I end up shouting at them. Fear not, Martin. Our experts have heard your call. Joining selling specialist Curtis is professional housekeeper Marianne. She knows all about keeping things spick and span. Well, the cavalry's here. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. And they head straight to the loft where Curtis discovers a box of potentially sellable TV toys from the 70s. These look like they've not been kept in pristine condition. Does that mean they've been used? All the original ones I had when I was young, I've replaced with these. So these are actually in good condition, considering they're as old as me. This one was about 40 quid. And this one's unusual because they didn't make many gonzos. This is in very fine condition for something that's 40 years old. I know. I get that, too. People say that to me a lot. Yeah. I think this is going to look better than you in 40 years' time, Thank though. Thank you very to be much. Fair enough. Very nice. Cheeky, Curtis. What's the bottom line for this box of goodies? Let's aim for 150 quid for the lot. OK, leave it with me. I'll Lovely. see what I can do. Thank you. Still to come, Marianne has a job on her hands with Martin. I can see that you're not getting anywhere fast, no, are you? No, it's a bit of a nightmare. And it's nothing but hard graft for Joanna. They're quite heavy. I'll be in the Olympics weightlifting you category by the this. time I've finished here. In Lincolnshire, we're helping Graham try to sort his massive hoard before his home turns into a refuge for refuse. This is going to sound really bad, but I can't walk past a skip without going through it. And in Middlesex, our experts are helping Martin with his overflowing toy box. My parents have spoiled me. You know, they've, they've given me everything that I ever wanted, and I've still got it. In Middlesex, Marianne and Curtis are scouring through the massive jumble and toys, looking for stuff to get rid of. Just like me. Or sell. Oh, now that's nice. Some of Martin's retro wear has caught his eye. That's pretty nifty. This wasn't yours when you were a boy, was it? No, it's much older than me. Where did you buy it from? It was on um, one of those auction websites. Right. And I got it for 20 quid, which I think was a bargain. Right, OK. And then I made my poor old dad spend 50 quid to put new tyres on it. <laughs> well, it's a Sunbeam Winky. So that puts it at about 1957, 1958. Retro objects are very popular. 50s kids' tricycles sell online for around £25 to over 100 depending on condition. But how much does Martin want? Let's talk about bottom line. Get the money for the tyres back for my dad, because he paid for them. Bottom line is £50 for this bike. Yeah. You can ride it away if you like. It's a lovely offer. <laughs> it depends what I'm taking with me. Come on, Curtis. You know you want to. Except he has also spotted the faded glory of a 50s cabinet and is keen to talk kitchenalia. And it's actually useful storage. Yes. You can fit a lot of junk in it, obviously. Yeah, it's, yeah <laughs> as I can see. Yes. 50s furniture is all the rage just now. But Martin bought it at a premium in a fit of auction fever and wants to recoup £200. 
In its current state, that's pushing it. Unless... What do you think about spending a little bit of time giving it some love yourself? I like the idea of having a go at doing it up. I've also got a tin of turquoise paint that I bought. Well, there we are. You it's not even going to cost you any money. I'm going to shake you on that. OK, no problem. You've, you've got a task on your hands yeah. now. Finding the paint. Finding the paint <laughs> and making it look pretty. It's a deal, and Dad Ken will be glad to see the back of it. It would be nice to have my shed back. In a very short period, all this stuff will be gone. Gone. And Excellent. you will have your shed back. Fingers crossed. These toys, the bikes, the retro cupboard, they could net him a good few pounds. I suppose now it's all down to me. Curtis has his work cut out to recoup 50 quid for the trike tyres and test out the TV toy market. But he's leaving Martin to sort that kitchen cupboard. How have you gone? Retro cupboard, really nice. I'm going to go have a route round. I'm going to get selling. Great. Good luck. Bye. Marianne's not one to pussyfoot about. She's going to kickstart the clear out, starting in the rafters. Oh my this God. is the worst of it. I can see that. <laughs> it's not great. How do you know where anything is? I don't know where anything is. That's the problem. You've still got things with labels on, though. That I you know. haven't even used. Well, I bought it for a car journey, and then you know, you know, you see things, and you think, I could do something with that. What would you do with that? Well, I'd put it in a bag and throw it in the loft. <laughs> Clearly, I can see that you're not getting anywhere fast, no, are you? No, it's a bit of a nightmare. I concentrate on more how I'm going to decorate this fictional place that I haven't got. <laughs> and then I think to myself, if I take all this with me, this is how my place will look. No, 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 we can't, we can't let no. that happen. Any money Curtis makes will help Martin fly the nest. My grand plan was to move out at some point, and that hasn't happened. I've bought endless stupid things and packed them away, and unfortunately, it's just got out of control. Martin's starting to move on. I feel quite positive. I've just got a new job in a care home. Great. Which I'm looking forward to starting. You come across as that caring kind of person. I think decisions need to be made. Right, that's going to go, that's going to stay, that's going to go. And would you be happy to let them go? Yes, I think it's time to let some stuff go. Mm. You know, bags and things, these can go to charity shops. People always want that sort of thing, don't Do they? Do they? What for? Well, you obviously <laughs> had it for one reason. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it, it's colourful. You're making no. me want to keep it. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Onwards. So, <laughs> onwards and upwards. Working with Martin is great fun, but I can really sense his frustration. His hoard is holding him back, but I think he's ready now to move on. At a large marketplace in Glasgow, Curtis has arranged to meet a potential buyer of Martin's retro trike. After advertising it on the internet, there's been some interest. So I've come to the Barrows down in Glasgow, and the guy meeting me is the only guy that's answered my ad. So I'm really hoping he takes it off me, and I've got to get £50, because that's what those tyres cost. So, fingers crossed. Well, thanks for meeting me down here, William. What are you going to do with it, though? Well, we'll obviously renovate it. I've got a granddaughter that's fit, fit on it at the moment, so maybe she'll use it. It's a 57, 58 Winky, so do you know what? It's in pretty good condition too, isn't it? It is. But it's 57, it's the same age as me. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's talk money. Uh, would you take 40? 40 is a little bit low for okay. me. Thank you. 50 pounds. How's that? A deal? I'll go for 50 quid. OK, then. Good. Better show us your money, then. There you go. It's the 50 pounds Martin hoped for. All yours. OK, thanks very much. Thanks, William. It's dead on the money. That's what we wanted for it. At least they got the money for their tyres back. Back in Lincolnshire, where bargain buyer Graham's been filling his home with all sorts of junk, cleaning businesswoman Joanna is in his stowed-out study. Graham's got one, two, three, four. Graham. Five, six, six printers. Who needs six printers? Graham's relentless collecting has become overwhelming, but he thinks he knows how it started. Growing up, we were quite a poor family. 
It was a tough but happy childhood. As I got older, I'd look to buy material things we couldn't have when I was growing up. As the hoard's grown, friends and family are more reluctant to come over, and the clutters become difficult to cope with. I went to get something out my wardrobe the other day and all this stuff came tumbling out. And I sat on the floor with all this stuff around me and just wanted to cry because there comes a point where you can't get any more in a drawer, you can't get any more in a cupboard. I need and have to do this, if nothing else for my health. Time for Joanna to get frank. Hi, how are you getting on? How am I getting on? I didn't know where to start. Did you yeah. know how many game consoles you've got? I've counted six. Oh, there's more than that. Really? <laughs> the things that you want to keep are yeah. the things that are stopping your family coming to visit. Yep, yep. And I, I, I don't know, but family are more important to me than anything. Oh, and yeah. I'm sure that that's yeah. the same. I wouldn't ever, ever want you to get rid of things that are no. dear to you. No. It's just the things that aren't going to make your life any better, no, we need no. to get rid. I've hung on to these things like as if they're people. Yes and I came to the conclusion that it had to stop. And so, with your help... Thank you very much for sharing that with me, Grail. No, that I... means a lot. I know initially when you walk in here, I'm sure you think, oh, no, where, where do I start? That's exactly it. That's exactly what I think. But we can do this. We can work as a team. Let's work hard. Yeah. Let's get it cleared and let's yeah. get you some cash. It's game over for those consoles. They're headed for auction, giving Graham space at home and hopefully cash in his pocket. There's one, two. They're quite heavy. I'll be in the Olympics weightlifting you category by this. the time I've finished here. No gold medals here yet. They need to make space and work out what to keep, sell and clear out. So that what can we, go. We're getting rid of that. Oh, that's a pretty picture. Yeah, it's lovely. That can go, though. That's where my staple go. I may change my mind on that one. But after a good start, pretty soon things slow down. In here is, is mainly wires, so I'll, I will keep those. Yes. Um, and leisurely sort out what's any good and what's no good afterwards, and I can deal with that myself. When we got to the small nitty gritty items, such as computer wires and phone chargers, he was quite reserved. His tone went down. He wasn't happy to part with those things. So I'm tempted to say keep that because it might come in useful. With Graham, fast decisions are definitely the way forward. Eventually, one clear corner emerges. Oof, we've done so our look, job. There's, there's a space. A space. It's a small space, but a giant leap for Graham Kind. And after today's sorting sesh, Joanna has persuaded Graham to clear out a stack of gadgets and gubbins he never, ever uses. Graham, I can tell, is really having fun with this process whilst I'm here with him. I really do hope that once I've gone, he continues the process. Now, Joanna's leaving Graham to go solo. Still to come, Marianne doesn't mince her words. No. What are you doing, man, keeping all these things up here? And Joanna gets a surprise at Graham's. Amazing, isn't it? It's great stuff. <laughs> In Middlesex, declutter experts Curtis and Marianne are helping Martin. He's desperate to get rid of his huge collection of toys and retro wear. You can ride it away if you like. It's a lovely offer. <laughs> And in Lincolnshire, Curtis and Joanna have been helping Graham sort out his hoard of bargain buys. Did you know how many game consoles you've got? I've counted six. Oh, there's more than that. After a good start, Joanna left Graham to it. At the moment, I don't know if Graham's strong enough to work through it on his own. In fact, I don't know if I'd be strong enough to do it all on my own. It's just a shame that I have to leave him. Joanna will keep an eye on Graham because it could be a bumpy journey. Curtis, however, has headed to auction, hoping to raise some cash. Graham's cigarette case, now silver, always sells. I'm expecting that to do pretty well today. All Curtis can do now is sit tight. 
We're now moving to 1148, which is the Silver Masonic cigarette case. We have one secret bid here on the commission. I must start the bidding at 30 pounds. 32 at the far back, 35 against you, sir. 38, 40 against you. Please. 48 is bid, 50 is my bid. Yes, please. 55, 60 I've got. Yes, sir. 65, 70, 75, 80 I've got. Super, you're out, 80 pound. It's my bid on the commission at 80 pounds. Fair warning then, last chance then, please, at 80 pounds. Hammer's going down. No, that's Sorry. not bad. Okay. That's a handsome sum, considering Graham bought it for 14 quid. Since Joanna's first visit, Graham's been sorting through his hoard on his own. Now it's the day his unwanted items are being taken away. I want all the clutter gone. I've got to do it properly. Face my demons and the last 30 years of hoarding are coming to an end. With his jam-packed garage and study needing a monumental effort to clear out, Joanna's worried he might not manage. So she's paying a surprise visit. I've just come to see how Graham's getting on. I had a feeling he was struggling, so I've come to lend a hand. Hello. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. How are you? Oh, it's lovely to see you. What a surprise. <gasps> Brought some muscle. So we'll crack on. I'm here to help. Brilliant. Oh, God, I'm really excited now. Let's get some boxes. Yeah, let's do it. And there's more help from friends and neighbours, plus professional house clearers and a valuer from a large auction house. Let's make some quick decisions then. OK, shall we start off? Yeah, yes. that's a save. A save. OK, I'll hand this to the guys. As they weed through everything, they discover that Graham's been collecting the same thing again. Hoover. And again. Floor polisher. And again. That's a carpet shampooer. Yeah. His collection of carpet cleaning contraptions alone is immense. Did you realise you had this many? I'll be honest, yes. We generate around one million tonnes of electrical waste every year in the UK. But anything with a plug can be recycled if you can't sell it. Five hours and 16 carpet cleaners later, Graham's on a roll and Joanna's confident she can leave him to it. One tonne of clutter from his garage and study have already been loaded into the first van. And making decisions fast is helping Graham get rid of loads of duplicates already. You should be proud of yourself. It's a start, isn't it? <laughs> I hope I've helped you. You have indeed, bless you. Today has been brilliant. There was so much stuff to move and I hope I've done my job. Joanna's been a great help. We've managed to push me into making some decisions, so... All in all, it's been a really productive day thus far. Still plenty to do. There sure is, Graham. Curtis is meeting specialist dealer Hillary. Graham's had second thoughts about selling his vast stamp collection, and now he's only parting with a few less sentimental albums. I know Graham's found it really hard to get rid of these. Let's hope I don't find it hard to sell them. Hillary? Oh, hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I've got some stamps to show you. Have you really? And some albums as well. Oh, OK. You get them all out. I've seen the days when stamps were really, really popular. Yep. And unfortunately, there's no youngsters joining the hobby. No. The older people have got everything. Um, they're only looking for the cream now. There's an awful lot of grease in this one. Um, Do you think it's very dirty? No, 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 no. Grease has in the country. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness for that. Amongst the collection is an album commemorating the Queen's Silver Jubilee. Everybody wanted it in 1977. Nowadays, it's 20 quid maximum. 20 quid isn't to be sniffed at. But Curtis wants Hillary to buy them all. We're looking at about £40 here, and that goes against my better judgment. £40? Good offer. I'll be happy with that. Nicely done, Curtis. It's a deal, and £40 for Graham. In a loft in Middlesex, 
Martin and Marianne are tackling 30 years' worth of nostalgic toy and retro homeware collecting. That can go in there. That's empty. I can throw out somebody else's stuff easily. I can say, chuck it, chuck it, chuck it, chuck it. But when it's mine, no. <laughs> but Marianne isn't taking no for an answer. You've even got Faxo in here. It's That's not out of date. No. What are you doing, man, keeping all these things up here? Plastic bottles and rubbish. Well, that's rubbish. We need somewhere for rubbish now. <laughs> you don't need to be having these now, love. What have we got in here, then? More and more stuff. Martin's sought out for charity and resale is officially underway. We're definitely on a winning game here. But Curtis has a task on his hands. He's finding it hard to sell the retro TV toys because Martin wants two-thirds of the market value. So far, individual buyers want to pay slightly less, retailers only want to pay half, and Martin won't go any lower. Now, a toy collector's interested in buying them as a job lot. But can Curtis do a deal that will satisfy Martin? OK, I mean, I think he wants to get rid of all of them, so it makes sense for us to agree, agree on a figure for the whole collection. And you're saying about £70 for the whole collection. £70 is lower than Martin wants. What I'll do is I'll have a word with him, let him know what the price is, and I'll come back to you and let you know. OK, Mark, that's lovely, thank you. £70. Let's see if you're happy, shall we? Now it's up to Curtis to see if Martin will budge on the price. Back at Martin's house, he and Marianne have done their best for now in the loft, so it's on to the shed. Brace yourself. My God. <laughs> you do have some... Um, An array. Clutter. Of... <laughs> I think I do get a little bit, well, why should I give it all away? But then you think of the vicious circle of this is how it ends up. Mm. That's why you should give some away. But you see, I understand your thoughts in not wanting to give it all away, but in order for you to make a start and move forward, you're going to have to let go of some Something, of it. Something, yeah. And then maybe the most treasured items that you perhaps want to keep, you can then take, when you've made a few pennies, yeah. to your new place where you're going to live, free up all this in here, and let your dad have some space, because you have yeah. taken over his... Shed and his loft. <laughs> and the house. Yes, yes. I'm just worried that if I clear the shed out, my dad might tell me to go and move into it. <laughs> Let's go and get some boxes. Box it up. <laughs> if Martin can keep himself motivated, loads of his stuff will be leaving the house, including himself. Now Marianne's leaving, Martin's got to do it on his own. In Lincolnshire, Graham's colossal clear-out is continuing with his mates. Feed him. <laughs> he wants all the help he can get. Okay, I think that's the last one of today. Paul, Hello. are you going to take it Nottingham tip? <laughs> <laughs> Graham has already loaded one van. Now he's finishing off filling a second one. Well over a tonne of clutter is on its way to be sold, recycled or responsibly binned. Thanks so much for your, all your help. It's been fantastic. The garage and study were Graham's worst nightmares. Now he needs to make them his dream spaces. Two months later and Graham's kept the momentum going. Some things have been very emotional. Some days have been really emotional. The way I would describe it is that I feel like I've been cleansed. Now Joanna's here to see how he's been getting on and to let him know how much money has been raised. Really, really looking forward to seeing Joanna again. Hopefully she'll be pleased with what I've done so far. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, young man. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm grand. Good, Good to see you again. Well, I can't wait for you to see what I've done. Neither can I. Hope you like it. I'm sure I will. Graham can't wait to show off his garage first. Before, it was completely congested with car boot booty. But now, a massive 60% of his clutter has gone. 
and it's much more organised, with Graham fired up to clear even more. Do you need a hand? I think I can manage it. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Rarely am I lost for words. Really? Yes, you've got an organised garage. Absolutely. The space, I can yeah. twirl. Yeah. I can see one vacuum cleaner. That's right, one just there, and that's a steamer. All the others are gone. I really can't believe the change in this garage. Excellent. And I'm excited to see more. Let's go. I'll follow you. OK. Next, the study. Before, it was full of games, gadgets and random garb. Now it's been transformed into a clear, relaxing space. Well, OK, here we are. What do you think? What room's this? <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? It's great stuff. <laughs> do you remember all that stuff that was right up to the ceiling here? Do you remember over there, that's where we started? Yes! That very, very first that's box. That's where it all started. Yeah. It's so blooming marvellous, Graham's already getting house guests. I've got friends coming this weekend uh, from America, so... How lovely. Yeah, and I'm on a roll and, and I want more to go. This has been no mean feat for Graham. And now it's time for Joanna to reveal how much money is coming his way. If we put the money that you've raised yeah. and the cash sales that we've made, yeah. it's a grand total of £830. Wow, that's fantastic. It's amazing. That's brilliant. What are you going to spend the money on? I'd like to give half to a cystic fibrosis charity. That's very kind of yeah. you. And with the other half of the money? Towards some kitchen units. OK. Graham's cleared out rooms are unrecognisable. And with over £570 made at auction, £200 from specialist dealers and 60 quid that Graham made, he's got a fantastic cash for clutter starting total. I'm going to continue what I've started now, so thank you for everything. You've got the decluttering book. I have. It's great to see the difference Graham's made to his garage and his study, and it's even better to see the difference in Graham as a person. It's like a freedom, in a way, so I'm very pleased. Still to come, Martin has a challenge. For resale, it really does need to look... Yeah, perfect. ..the bee's knees. And Curtis is in for a shock. You've got to tell me about this. In Middlesex, Martin wants rid of the huge hoard of nostalgia he keeps at home at Mum and Dad's. I can throw out somebody else's stuff easily, but when it's mine, no. <laughs> you don't need to be having these now, love. Now, a week after Marianne's visit, Martin's up in the loft decluttering on his own. All the things I'm keeping, I've put into a nice order. All the things I'm getting rid of, we're trying to bag up. Martin's keen to recoup some cash. I've got into debt, buying all this stuff, and if I just give it all away or throw it in a skip, it just seems a bit stupid. And talking of stupid... I worked in a photo shop, and accidentally, I printed a massive, great big picture of me. It's not even in focus. Now that's what I call a selfie. As well as the loft, Martin and Dad Ken are tackling the shed. Oh, Lord. Look, we're going to get rid of it today, do you think? Yes. There's loads. <laughs> oh, dear. How do you collect so much? You're incredible. There's another one there. We've almost got a set. Does this match? Not really. <laughs> You've been framed. <laughs> Very good. I'm glad these are going anyway. At tea break, Ken reflects on what's brewing. It's a really good thing because he has to learn that he mustn't keep on collecting and collecting because he's not going to be living here forever. Things are on the move and that's what I want. I think my dad will be pleased when this is, you know, nice and clear because he'll be able to keep all his stuff in here. 
a lovely cup of tea. Thank, Thank you, you very much. But there's still a way to go. Every time we think we've got to the end of it, there's another drawer or another cupboard or... <laughs> we could be here for weeks. <laughs> Excellent, really good. The space is getting much more improved now. There's room for your belly now. Leave my belly alone. <laughs> And for that cheek, Martin's left to do the final job on his own, getting that retro kitchen cabinet ship shape for selling. But soon he realises it's a bigger job than he expected, so he's getting advice from Alicia, who runs an upcycling charity. It's a bit oh, unusual lovely, yeah. with that on the inside. Yeah. My plans were to sand it and take it to my own place and have it all looking fabulous, but yep. that's not really happening yet. It's a bit of work. Have you done that sort of thing before? No. No. For resale, you need to be able to clean off all this paint. It really does need to look... Yeah, perfect. ..the bee's knees. With Martin now doing two jobs, his time and skills short, there's a huge demand for trendy retro furniture like this, especially if it's been refurbished properly. So what are Alicia's ideas? We've got a couple of options. We run workshops and we can teach you, at, at the very least, the basics. And then you can have a go at it yourself and then sell it. And that's probably where you're going to make the most money. Right. The other option is we take it to our workshop and we restore it for you. You come and collect it and you sell it. Or I buy it from you and then you don't have to ever see it again. <laughs> what, what do you think? I'm not the most brilliant person with tools and paint and, you know, it'll be on the cupboard, but it'll also be on the floor, the ceiling, the curtains. It's, just, <laughs> yeah. it's like having Paddington Bear help. Well, to have us restore it in our workshop, you're probably looking at £250, and that would be giving you a, a good deal. Martin needs to ponder on that decision. But for now, he has last-minute tidying to do. I've cleared out a lot of stuff. I've hidden a lot of stuff. Um, Curtis is coming, which I'm dreading. It's like a royal visit. Curtis is back to inspect Martin's efforts. Right, let's see what you've done in here, then. I know what you're going to say. Am I going to be unimpressed? Oh, hang on a sec. It's quite this clear. is brilliant. It's almost empty. Almost. Before, the shed was absolutely stuffed with Martin's overspill of clutter. Now it's a clear, organised space. Just a few things left, including that kitchen cabinet. So what has Martin decided to do? I think I'm going to do a course and do some painting. Really? And do it myself, but do it properly. Having spoken to an expert, she suggested do a workshop, and um, it's, it's not too far away. Um, the main problem is getting it on the roof rack of my Nissan Micra. <laughs> You've got the bit between your teeth with this, haven't I'm ready. you? But I really don't want to sell it. I quite like it, so... So, where's all this other stuff gone? The internet. I've had a boot sale. Have you? That's really good. And even the cabinet's empty. Where's all the cabinet stuff gone? So I boxed it up and I took to different charity shops. You've done well. It's a nice, empty space. Time to check out the loft. Before... Martin's toys, retro wear and compulsive purchases were tossed into an ever-growing heap, hidden from view of his house-proud mum. Now, even though Martin has shipped loads of stuff out, there's still quite a lot of mess left. You've got to tell me about this. So, how come this isn't clearer than I expected it to be? I needed to find something. My mad hat has... Hat. And so, therefore, I tipped everything out, trying to find it in a panic. Ah, the old Mad Hatter excuse. But working full-time in two jobs means less time to clear out. Although he does make time to play with these familiar toys. So, so what's the story with keeping these chaps, I then? just love this, and it's mine. I'm going to keep it forever. Yep. Martin wouldn't let Curtis sell them at a lower price, so they're back home. And this will never leave you? Never. So, since you started this process, are you thinking differently? Now, if I buy something, do I really need it? Yeah. Will I use it? Will I get round to painting it? Even though this part of the house isn't clearer, your mind sounds clearer. Yeah. I'm a lot more focused now. I will spend some more time getting it more organised so it looks better, but... That's what it needs. Know, it's just taking that bit of time. 
Yeah, no, I'm very happy. Although Martin couldn't part with his favourites in the end, other things have been sold online and at car boots. Now he'll find out if he can pay his dad back for those trike tyres. I haven't read you 50 quid, mate. OK. A bit more than that. Oh, good. I thought yeah. you were going to say less no. than that. I don't know if this is going the wrong way, this conversation. And it's not 100? OK. Well, I think you've done really well, then. Anything above that, I'm impressed with. £140, just shy. That's all right. Brilliant. So Cheers to that, my friend. It's a modest cash for clutter total, but Martin wants to keep going. He's already listed around six pieces of furniture online. Two jobs and he's cleared one of them rooms out. Martin never ceases to amaze me. I think anything that got my daddy's money back for the tyres was great. So, yeah, I'm ultimately happy. No, my daddy will probably just let me keep it. He's good like that. Curtis is impressed. Martin is happy and Dad Ken is, well, amazed. Magic. I love it. Thank you.